Greetings from Sweden and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your spiritual growth. My name is David and today's video is going to be quite a personal one. And it's about something that I believe is silently spreading throughout our societies. And I believe that it is doing so because of many of the features of our modern culture. And the reason that this video is going to be more personal is that I believe that personal examples are the best way to get this message true. And from my past I do have very concrete personal examples to show you. Because the thing is that in my past, in my teens and early twenties, I lived for empty sensory gratification basically. I was an atheist up until age 23 and I took it to what I believed and actually still believe are the logical consequences. Which means I believe that when we die we just cease to exist. There is no inherent meaning with existence. Life is ultimately pointless. And we are basically just thinking animals. So we might just grab on to whatever little momentary pleasures that we can get our hands on. And I really lived this way. I partied a lot. I didn't have any really deep connection with other people. It was mainly party friends, even though we could occasionally talk about some a little bit deeper things. But generally I didn't get very personal with other people. And I believe this numbness and this loss of connection is something that inevitably happens when you live this way. When you live for just gratifying the senses and when you don't believe that there is anything more to life than this. I know that you can find meaning in life without believing in an afterlife, without believing in God. This is not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying that if you take these beliefs to the consequences that I did, that I know many people out in society do today, whether they have spelled it out for themselves or not, then this will be the inevitable consequence. And as you very well know, our culture is full of opportunities for empty sensor gratification. We all know what is most consumed on the internet, for example. I actually don't know if I can mention it here, so I don't do it anymore because I think the algorithm might actually kill my channel if I do. So, but we all know what we are talking about. And the world is full of food to stimulate our senses. We have all of this hookup culture and many people live to just go out and party in the weekends basically. And I'm not judging here. I think that it's very important to get away from moralizing about it, from judging people about it and just look at the consequences. Because the thing is that for me, when I lived this way, I had no idea what troubled state I was in. We usually expect that our habits, our behavior, our actions have very definite consequences that we feel. But this was something that I was clueless about for the vast majority of my life. Even when my priorities started to change because I started to find 
spirituality in my life, I found God, etc. Even after that, I had a lot of habits that were not so easy to get rid of. That were very easy to rationalize because they gave me pleasure, they gave me comfort, and they gave me a lot of joy in the present moment. But on the long run they made me numb, they broke me down, and they broke my spirit. And I think that it is very important to realize this. We can go through our whole lives without noticing that we are in a troubled state. It's not at all obvious. And honestly, even after many years after I initially started to wake up, it was not until maybe five, six years ago. Actually, it was very much around when I met my wife five years ago that I actually started to notice this for real, where I could no longer keep these emotions contained. And this actually flung me into a very deep depression for a while. I don't know if it was very deep, but it was quite serious. I did not feel good at all, and... But I'm actually more thankful than th that this happened than the, I would have been for just going on thinking that everything was fine while numbing myself more and more to my emotions. It's better to have this crash and ju just actually break through these things, fight through these things. Because otherwise... You can go through your whole life in this numb state. And I think that there are many people in the world today that are destined to exactly do this. Unless they change their life path. Unless they start to truly look at themselves. Truly look at what their emotional states are. Because again, I didn't notice this for the first maybe 35 years of my life. And suddenly it all came crashing down. But I also believe, and I want you to look at this and think of how this could work in the more upper levels of society, because on the surface it might look like you're really fine. There were a lot of dysfunctions in my life and therefore it was also a lot easier to spot this when it came to myself. But there are a lot of people that have very functional lives but who probably are totally dead inside. You could think for example of the CEO that without blinking makes a decision that kills a couple of hundred people because he knows he can, can get away with it. The multinational corporate world is full of these examples. Now I'm not saying that all CEOs of multinational corporations are bad, this is not what I'm saying. But you could look at the documentary The Corporation for example. To see examples of really horrific decisions that have made, but been made by people in executive positions. Do you really think that these people have basically any, when you know that things can work out this way, when you know that you can numb yourself to, to your emotions without noticing it, then the question is, when it comes to these people making these really horrible decisions, do you think that they have any real emotional life left in them? I honestly don't do that. I don't believe that. I think that there might be occasions when the emotions break through. There might be relationships with people that are more emotional than others. But in general, I think that the world is full of people 
that are basically numb to their emotions. I know this because I could very easily have gone down this path myself. And in connection with this, I also want to bring up a very dangerous trend, I believe. Because there are very powerful voices that say today that if you are in a specific negative emotional state, there is nothing you can do about it. You're doomed to be there forever till you die, unless you get some medication for it. And this has been the trend in society today, just medicate away everything and therefore make people even more emotionally numb than they were before. Because this is what happens when you don't address the problems in, the li in your life but just take a pill instead to make the problems go away. And I understand that this is a difficult situation because, of course, when it comes to this, many people are so caught up in a difficult life situation that they don't really have any time to dig into the deeper issues of why they are where, where they are. They don't have the time or energy for it. And then it might at least seem like the only option is to take a pill to make the pain go away. But this problem is of course exacerbated by people who say that you have no other choice than take medication. So just go ahead and do that and make the emotional more manageable because you are never going to feel in a, a different way otherwise. I truly and honestly believe from the bottom of my heart that this is so wrong. And I know this from personal experiences as well. I've battled tr th through depression. I've battled through a lot of negative emotions. If I could have afforded a therapist, it would probably have been a lot easier and, uh, even. But I've worked a lot with myself. I know that you can let go of these negative emotions. I know that you can raise your state of consciousness. I know that you can feel better without medication. But if you don't learn how to handle, how to manage your inner life, then of course, since we are very complex, complex creatures, there will be no real way to get away from this. You need to understand some fundamental basics of how you work. Otherwise, you will of course have a difficult time to get away from this. And I will talk a little bit about some th simple steps that you can do to get more in contact with your emotions again. If you have, like I did, been living a life that wa was very emotionally numbing for you. I will talk more about this in other videos because I have a lot more to work through when it comes to this myself. Even though I have a lot of very high emotional states sometimes, I know that there is a lot of baggage that I still need to get uh, to let go of if I really want to constantly be in this fully feeling state. So therefore, I'm making this sort of a project here and I'm going to talk more about what I learn in future videos. And I'm even writing a fictional story when it comes to this that deals with these subjects. And I'll let you know when it's up on uh, Etsy where I'm uh, going to pu uh, publish these stories. And I will also publish it on my store on YouTube. But anyway, let's get back to what I'm talking about here. One of the simplest way ways is to simply get more into the habit of asking yourself how you feel. 
name your emotions. Really feel them in your body. Don't, don't try to suppress them, but don't go into reactive mode either. Just learn to be with the emotions. Learn to live with them. Learn to feel them instead of suppressing them. Also feel your body because here is where the emotions comes up. Uh, many of us, and I was in this place before as well, have not really gotten into contact with their bodies. This is also why exercises such as meditation and yoga can be so powerful. Because you learn to come more into contact with your body and therefore you will also come more into contact with your emotions. There is a reason why some people during yoga class, for example, start crying because they come into contact with something that is blocked within them that they haven't fe felt for years, maybe. And also, mindfulness is very important in this. Get into the habit of being present with yourself, being present in the moment, knowing what, what's going on both on the outside and on the inside. When you do this, it will be much easier both to feel the emotions and also to know when you are going into reactive habitual behavior. And this also goes into the importance of being conscious with your relationships with others. Don't just let your relationships being on autopilot. This is actually something that I need to work a lot on myself. Don't get into just habitual conversations. Instead, think of what you are talking about to your friends and family. Think consciously about how you can add more depth into your relationships. Think consciously about how you can be more intimate with the people around you. Of course, be a little bit balanced so you don't start oversharing with people that you basically don't know very well. But with the people that are pretty close to you, see how you consciously can make these relationships even closer even more personal, where you get to know the other people better and where they get to know you better. Think of what questions you ask other people. All of this helps when it comes to get closer to other people and this is also a very good way to awaken your own emotions more. And as I said, I will talk more about this in the future. But right now I want to mostly mention this that I believe is a huge problem in our society, but which I believe to a large extent goes unnoticed. And I believe that this could actually be more important to men than to women because honestly we men have a harder time when it comes to our emotions and there are several reasons for this we have the specter of uh, the old macho ideals with uh, the man that is just stone hard and everything that comes from the past but we also have a very destructive alternative given to us right now that basically says that if men just become more like women we are going to be okay. No, we men need to learn to relate to our emotions without becoming emasculated. There is an important polarity between the masculine and the feminine that needs to be preserved if you want to feel healthy. I know that there might be some room here for differences, but this is what I believe to be the case with most men. I'm not going to get into the whole uh, 
political discussion about this that is so heated that is not what I where I want to go with this video. But it is important for men to be balanced in their emotions, to be balanced in their emotional expressions. Again, this is something where I have a lot to work on still. But I notice that I feel much better and much more secure within myself when I can main maintain a balanced emotional life. This means that I don't go around giving expression to every little emotion that comes up. If I feel down, I try to avoid complaining about it. But this is important for women as well. Nothing is going to ever become better when we go around complaining about things. But nothing becomes better because we go around pretending when, uh, that everything is fine when it really isn't either. So therefore, we need to find a healthy way of coming into contact with our emotions. And yes, I believe it's a good thing to share some of our emotions with our partners. We shouldn't just keep it bottled up inside. But it should also not flow, flow into the territories of being whiny, being complaining and just simply yeah for the lack of a better word we should avoid being a crybaby this is important for both men and women but it's especially important for men i think but it's not a solution to keep the emotions bottled up if, on, if only women were supposed to cry, I don't think that men would come with any tear channels, to be honest. But again, we need to approach this as everything else in a conscious manner. We cannot just let our minds and our egos ta take us in any di direction that they want. No, be conscious about this. I'll talk about this in a whole video in the future. I just want to give you a little brief overview of what I'm talking about here. And I will get back to this more and more. And again, I believe that this is something that is so important that we talk about. Because, as I said... I went through the first 35 years of my life not noticing the problem here, not noticing the troubled state that I was in. And suddenly everything hit me at once and everything came up to the surface at once. But I don't believe this would even have happened if I hadn't met my wife and if I hadn't had my spiritual awakening. Then I could have gone through my whole life just keeping these emotions bottled up. And I truly believe that this is a silent disease that is spreading in our culture. As social media puts more distance between us. As the situation that we have been in has put even more distance between us. As we have access to all of these things. Whether it's uh, pills or food or hookups or whatever. Whatever it is. We have so much that can numb us, that, that can distract us. Not to mention all of this entertainment that we have around us 24 hours a day things that just keep us distracted 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 so we don't really have to feel what is going on inside of ourselves so i believe yes this is a silent disease that is spreading in our culture in our society i've experienced it close up hand as i very much was living this life and I think that there is a reason why I live this way. So I could see it, so I could talk about it, 
so I had personal experience to back it up with. But it is a silent disease that is spreading and we truly need to talk about it because emotionally numb people are not only in silent pain within themselves that might never get out, people are missing one of the most essential ingredients of the human experience, but emotionally, emotionally numb people are also a danger to others, as many of them don't have the same barriers to emotionally numb behavior as most of us have. This is also something that I experienced close hand when I was younger, especially in my late teens and early twenties. And I will talk about this more in other videos as well. But for now, this will have to do. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment and share the video on social media and other places. All of it helps the channel to grow. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so YouTube always notifies you when I put up new videos. And also check out the description and the comment section for other things that me and my wife are doing. And other than that, just sincerely thank you for your time.